Hi there, this is Wanda and today I'm here with the second part of my answer to your question. What are resists and how do you use them? If you haven't watched part one, go and check it out. You can find the link below. So what materials can we use for a resist? One of the most important things when using a resist is the choice of materials. It has to be something that doesn't felt onto wool, otherwise it will remain stuck between the layers instead of doing its job, which is to separate them. It should also be flexible enough to work with. The three main materials used are cardboard, thin plastic and floor underlayment. Cardboard is not something I use because we work with water, so you can only use it once. It's also not very malleable, so it's a bit hard to work with. Thin plastic is something I use sometimes. It's malleable, but it's hard to feel through a thick piece of felt. So I only use it when I'm felting thin pieces. Floor underlayment is my favorite resist material. It's thicker than plastic, but it's still flexible. It's also sold in wide rolls, so it allows you to draw resists for big felt pieces. But this is how I like to work. My suggestion is that you try them out and see what you like to work with. So now you know what a resist is and what it's for. You also know what materials you can use to make one. Wondering what else to consider when designing a resist? If so, Stay tuned to part three. Talk to you soon.